Good morning and welcome to Black Rock Outdoors. I'm Shannon Messer with Appalachian Flies. I'm the fly shop manager and uh, one of the head guides here at uh, Black Rock Outdoors in Silva. And what I'm going to be doing here for you this morning is tying up uh, an Adam variant. This fly was developed by Fred Hall, the late Fred Hall of Bryson Cities, back in the 1940s. Uh, it's a fly that works very well here in the mountains of Western North Carolina. I have been fortunate enough to take some awesome fish on this fly right here. It is a fly that I feel like would work in various places throughout the United States. And uh, I think it's something you should give a try. I have the opportunity to tie this on Anglers and Appetites, which you can find on YouTube um, there for them this past summer. Um, but here we go. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 12 of 1523 Orvis standard dry fly hook. I'm going to be using black thread, but certainly a brown thread will work well also. Uh, many of the old uh, timers here, as, as, we, as we call them, use brown thread a lot, but uh, certainly use whatever thread you have close by would, would work. I'm going to get uh, my thread started here on, onto my hook. Uh, for wings, I'm going to be using some grizzly hackle. And with that being said, I've actually already taken and I've cut those uh, wing tips uh, with my fingernail clippers, as I did in my previous video right there. Uh, something if you haven't tried it, give it a try. I think you'll certainly like how those wings come out for the most part. Go ahead and get this laid up here on the my hook. Get that in position. Get a few little wraps on here and we'll get those wings stood up here momentarily. As I wrap back, I'll pull up on these stems and get those broken off just like so. Bring the thread back up toward the front. Stand up the wings. Here, come in front. I'll go ahead and start separating those out for us here. You know, like so. I like these wings over hackle tip wings. I think that number one, they're, they're a little bit more durable. Uh, number two, I think it makes a prettier fly. And lastly, I can actually be sitting there at the house and uh, I can uh, go ahead and, and tie up um, actually cut up some of these wings right here and and uh, you know not be removed with what's going on in the world right there the TV can be going and stuff but uh, get up a bunch of these wings made up and I'm set to go with uh, have them ready to go for whatever flies I'm going to tie uh, for my telling material I want to use golden pheasant tippet uh, once again I do like getting the whole uh, the whole uh, neck of the bird right there and using all the feathers and different uh, areas of different flies that we tie but uh, but this particular pattern does call for a golden pheasant tippet for the tail I'm going to get a generous proportion of that right here go ahead and snip that off get that laid up here on my hook kind of know what length i need to get to right there get that tied in the next step where this fly is a little bit different is we're actually going to have some hackle in the back of the fly I'm going to be using some grizzly hackle. I've actually already got that cut down there, right there. You'll kind of want to go, you know, size wise there, a little smaller than what you're going to do up front. And get that laid in right there. Get that tied into the hook. Get the thread up here, spun up here in the way, and kind of give it a little bit of taper as well. The device I'm using, in case you're wondering, is a Norvice, a Norvice fly tying system. Get a little half itch in there. I'm actually going to grab my hackle pliers just because of where this is located. It'll help me weave this in and out just a smidge. We don't really need to over hackle this too much, but this is certainly a fly that I that I find that floats really well. It stands up. It certainly takes notice out there in the water, and I think those fish really like that. Got me some wraps made right there. I'm going to go ahead and capture off this hackle. And I also tie this down 12s, 14s, and 16s when it comes to sizes of, of this particular pattern as well. Those certainly adjust for wherever your location is. Our next step is going to be tying in some yellow ostrich hurl. Um, feel free to kind of, you know, mix it up, change up your colors, whether it's uh, green or orange, but yellow is the primary color. I could certainly see green working for us there when we get some chances when they we're using a Tennessee wolf and some, some green palmers and, and little green stones. I could really see those being a, a good little producer for us here as well. And I will probably uh, 
experiment with those and if those work out all right I'll certainly have those here in the bins at Black Rock Outdoors uh, you know for the customers once again get that secured off I'm gonna come right here I'm gonna start making some wraps with this uh, ostrich hurl if you haven't used ostrich hurl it can be a little bit brittle but the great thing is it makes a, a beautiful fly the yellow is very vibrant um, and a lot of folks here where we're at actually will use this as the egg sac on a female atom versus the yellow dubbing on a female atom um, so something you might want to give a try reach in there and get that snipped off there just like so I'm going to put a little securing uh, half pitch in here things do happen to to good people so in case something happens so I had a few more thread wraps and then for the half pitch here this morning I'm using some grizzly and also some um, you see right here that's actually a dark ginger or really a dark coachman type color but uh, my grizzly and brown were the colors it was called for but that these colors here will work as well and I happen to have them right here on my desk so I'm going to go ahead and trim those off get that lid up right there on the side of the hook shank kind of get this tied in here right quick Make a few little wraps right there, like so. I want to put me in a half hitch. And as you can see, I'm leaving some room up there to hide the hook because we certainly want to leave ourselves some space to be able to get our uh, tippet through the eye of the hook. So I'm going to come right here, grab both of my feathers. I'm going to wrap them at the same time. I'm going to separate there just a smidge for me. You see here, my rotating my vise I get some wraps in front uh, in the back of the wings and I'll go in front of the wings and this is a, a fly it's got a lot of hackle and stuff on it but it really floats well it works great here in the Smoky Mountain National Park especially the Deep Creek area I have taken some fantastic fish on this fly but it's a fly that will float very well in our little bit faster water and it fishes well in still water also Oops, you can see it right there as I put a half hitch, actually broke my thread off, but that's why we put those half hitches in there. Come right back in once again. Get that secured. Sometimes you can pull a little too tight even on some new thread. Trim that off like so. I'll reach in here and trim both these off. Then all we have to do is whip finish and put a little bit of head cement. Get that out of the way right there. Come right back here. Get a little bit of a whip finish on it. Oh, that's a good looking fly. I certainly sell a lot of these here at the store. A lot of folks have great success on this fly pattern. But that right there is what we call an Adam variant. It's a great fly that was developed by Fred Hall, the late Fred Hall of Bryson City, North Carolina, back in the mid 40s. Still fish is great today. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Folks, we appreciate you uh, viewing it with us again today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop us an email. You can reach me at AppalachianFlies at gmail.com or, you know, leave us a little comment here uh, after the video. Uh, BlackRockOutdoorCompany.com for all the information about the store, fishing reports, and things like that. Thank you and have a great day.